Number 11, MV Kalakala. Shortly after entering service on the 4th of July in 1935, the iconic MV Kalakala Ferry became the second most photographed object in the whole world. Known for its lovely Art Deco style and luxurious accommodations, the ship operated in Washington State's Puget Sound. In addition to offering ferry services, Kalakala was used for moonlight cruises, hosting a live dance orchestra. The vessel was voted second only to the Space Needle as a top attraction among visitors to the 1962 World's Fair. While its artsy appearance won people over, Kalakala's futuristic aircraft-inspired design was pretty impractical. The small wheelhouse offered poor visibility for the crew. Cars became wider after World War II, reducing the ferry's vehicle carrying capacity by 40% during post-war years. Passengers had an increasingly difficult time squeezing past cars as they boarded and disembarked from the ferry. The 1950s saw the development of more efficient vessels. By the end of the decade, the Kalakala was nearly obsolete. It was taken out of service in 1967 and briefly served as a crabbing vessel. Then it sat, abandoned, for a number of years before finally being scrapped in 2015. Still, it had a long life. Number 10. SS Valencia Built in 1882, the SS Valencia was a passenger steamer that operated between San Francisco and Alaska. It wasn't very popular among the general public, who thought that the ship was far too small and felt it was overly exposed to the elements. It was also quite slow earning it a second-class rating, and it navigated poorly during the winter. Valencia had a poor track record for safety. In 1902, she collided with another ship and was punctured. An investigation found that if the vessel had been damaged below the waterline, it would have capsized. Then, in 1905, she ran aground. Thankfully, nobody was injured. Bad weather set in during Valencia's final voyage in 1906 forcing its crew to rely on dead reckoning instead of navigating based on the position of celestial bodies in the sky. The ship struck a reef 11 miles 18 kilometers off Vancouver Island, causing a huge gash in the hull. Water poured in, and the 108 passengers were loaded onto lifeboats. Three lifeboats flipped while being lowered into the water, sending its occupants into the ocean. Two other lifeboats disappeared, and another capsized. Only nine people survived. The rest of the passengers drowned, were beaten to death by waves hitting the rocks, or died from hypothermia. 100 people, including women and children, died. For years after the disaster, fishermen and locals have claimed to see a phantom ship resembling the Valencia. Some witnesses reported seeing skeletons aboard, while others claimed they saw human-like figures clinging to the wreck for dear life. Number 9. Mary D. Hume in 1881, a prominent Oregon businessman named R. D. Hume built a steamer called the Mary D. Hume. The timber vessel hauled cargo between Oregon and San Francisco for eight years before serving as a whaling vessel in Alaska and then becoming a tugboat. Mary D. Hume was retired in 1977 after almost 100 years in service. She was towed back to her original home in Gold Beach, Oregon. In 1979, the ship was listed on the National Register of Historic Places despite being in a state of decay. Plans were made to turn the Hume into a museum, but the vessel slipped off the sling during transport and landed in the mud along the Rogue River. All the money that was meant to go into restoring it got squandered in an unrelated lawsuit, leaving the Hume to rot. Today, the vessel sits derelict on the shoreline. Number 8. SS St. Christopher Originally named the HMS Justice, the SS St. Christopher was built as a rescue tugboat for the U.S. Navy in 1943. But the American military never used the wooden vessel, which instead fell into the hands of the British Royal Navy. It was turned over as part of the Lend-Lease Act, which supplied food, oil, and military equipment to U.S. allies. The St. Christopher was reportedly used in the 1944 Allied invasion of Normandy, famously known as D-Day. After the war ended, the tugboat was returned to the U.S. Navy, then it was sold to a private buyer for commercial use. The boat ran aground during the 1950s and sustained rudder damage and engine problems, and was grounded in the Beagle Channel at Ushuaia, Argentina. Nicknamed the end of the world, Ushuaia is famous for being the world's southernmost city. The partially submerged St. Christopher still sits where it was left nearly 65 years ago. It's now become a tourist attraction and is even lit up at night. But nobody is allowed on the heavily damaged boat for safety reasons because it looks like it could finish sinking into the water any minute. Number 7. TSS Duke of Lancaster Built in Belfast, Ireland in 1956, 
the TSS Duke of Lancaster was once a passenger ferry and cruise ship that shuttled commuters between Lancashire, England, and Northern Ireland. Its leisure destinations included the Scottish Islands, Belgium, Denmark, Netherlands, Norway, and Spain. Cruise services ended during the mid-1960s when the ship was converted into a car ferry in order to keep up with competition. It held up to 1,200 passengers and 105 cars. A company in North Wales bought the Duke of Lancaster in 1979 with plans to turn it into an arcade called the Fun Ship. Local councils opposed the business and it closed in 2004 amid ongoing legal battles. Subsequent owners faced similar problems and abandoned any plans they had made for the ship. The Duke of Lancaster has sat in the same spot for over 40 years now. It's rotting and has become an even bigger eyesore than it probably would be as a functioning business. The games left behind from the vessel's days as an arcade were sold and removed in 2012. Around the same time, local graffiti artists were invited to make their mark on the derelict ship. Presumably artwork is more attractive than rust and decay. As of now, there appear to be no future plans for the vessel. Would you like to see the Duke of Lancaster in person? Have you? Let us know in the comments below and if you are liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Peter Iredale Peter Iredale was a London-based businessman who named his four-masted steel sailing vessel after himself. Built in England in 1890, the ship eventually made its way over to the United States. While sailing from Mexico to Portland, Oregon in 1906, the vessel encountered thick fog, strong gusts, and a rising tide. The captain, H. Lawrence, tried to steer the Peter Iredale away from shore, but it was grounded by rough seas and winds. A lifeboat reported to the scene and rescued the 27 people aboard, including two stowaways who had stashed themselves on the vessel. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. An inquiry absolved the ship's captain and crew of any blame in the incident and commended them for trying to save it. The hull sustained little damage and plans were made to retrieve it, but the weather remained hostile and kept delaying the salvage effort. The Peter Iredale began to list and got stuck in the sand as it languished. Someone purchased the salvaging rights in 1917, but never did anything with the ship. It's still there, sitting in the water as a shell of its former self. All that's left of the Peter Iredale are its bow and a few ribs and masts. Number 5. MS World Discoverer The MS World Discoverer was a German-made cruise ship that went into service in 1974. Built to withstand frigid polar conditions, it was capable of navigating the harsh Northwest Passage and occasionally even went on Antarctic cruises. The durable vessel met its end in 2000 when it struck an uncharted reef near the Solomon Islands. Thankfully, a ferry responded to the captain's distress signal and rescued all the passengers. In the meantime, the ship began to list, so the captain grounded it in Roderick Bay to prevent it from sinking. Ever since, the world discoverer has sat there, neglected as it slowly sinks. It's currently listing at 46 degrees and is practically laying on its side in the clear blue waters. Eventually, the vessel will inevitably end up entirely underwater. Time and the elements have taken their toll on the ship, which is rusting out and missing several windows. Several companies have tried to salvage the World Discoverer over the years, but on top of being damaged by Mother Nature, it was ransacked by locals during a violent civil war, and it was deemed not worth saving. The wreck has become a tourist destination, but it won't be visible forever. Number 4. SS Beichimo The SS Beichimo was originally a German trading vessel. It was given to Great Britain as a World War I reparation before coming under the ownership of the Hudson Bay Company. The ship traveled regularly across the Atlantic between Scotland and Canada, trading with Inuit tribes. In 1931, the steel-hulled steamer became trapped by ice flows in the Canadian Arctic. The crew was forced to abandon ship and built a makeshift shelter nearby while they awaited rescue. They lost sight of it during a blizzard, and when they awoke the next morning, the Beichimo had completely vanished. The men simply assumed it had sunk, but an Inuit fisherman spotted the vessel a week later. It was too badly damaged to salvage, so the crew retrieved what cargo and belongings they could and abandoned it once again. Over the following decades, many people claimed to see the Beichimo, earning it the nickname of the Arctic Ghost Ship. It was last seen in 1969 off the coast of Barrow, Alaska, 320 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Then, 37 years after being left behind by its crew, the ship finally seems to have vanished. Nobody has reported seeing it since. Deserted ships 
don't typically hang around in coastal areas for very long. They're usually swept out to sea by currents and or they eventually rust and sink. What's odd about the Beichimo is the length of time and frequency at which people reported seeing it. Even more strange is the conspicuous absence of a wreckage or any debris since it was last spotted. In a last ditch effort to find the ghost ship, the Alaskan government began an official search for Beichimo in 2006. No traces of it have been found. Number 3. USS Oriskany The United States has more aircraft carriers than any other country. One of them, the USS Oriskany, was built for the US Navy. It entered service shortly after World War II ended. The ship operated primarily in the Pacific until sometime during the 1970s. In 1966, 47 men tragically died in a fire on the ship when a magnesium flare was accidentally set ablaze. The Oriskany received two battle stars for its service in the Korean War and 10 battle stars for the Vietnam War. It was taken out of service in 1976. In 1995, it was sold for scrap, but the buyer didn't really do anything with it, and it was ultimately repossessed. During that time, the ship bounced around between different shipyards in California and Texas. The Navy eventually decided to repurpose the Oriskany by sinking it off the Florida coast as an artificial reef. It was towed to Pensacola, Florida in late 2004, where scientists performed tests to ensure that the ship wouldn't endanger human or marine life after being submerged. In 2006, Navy personnel sank the Oriskany in the Gulf of Mexico. After spending years aimlessly traveling from one shipyard to the next, the dilapidated vessel finally found its forever home. Nicknamed the Carrier Reef, it's one of the world's most popular diving sites. Number 2. BOS 400 South Africa's Maori Bay is home to a seldom visited wrecked crane barge called the BOS 400. It ran aground during a storm in 1994 while en route to Cape Town from Point Noire in the Republic of Congo. At the time, it was the largest floating crane in all of Africa. With no main engines of its own, the BOS 400 had to be towed from one location to the next. It was being pulled by the Russian tugboat Tigre, which was underpowered and ill-equipped to tow such a large piece of machinery. Consequently, the tow rope snapped and the barge crashed into some rocks. The crew radioed to Cape Town Harbor for help and two tugboats were dispatched to the scene. But seas were rough and they failed to connect to the BOS 400. All 14 crew members were airlifted to safety. After several failed salvage attempts, the BOS 400 was declared a total loss. It was left sitting among the boulders where it still remains to this day. Number 1. SS Crate Boom During the 1930s, a concrete ship called the SS Crate Boom appeared in Ireland's River Moy in Ballina. It's been there ever since. The Crate Boom was built amid a steel shortage during World War I. It functioned as a shipping vessel for a short time before being taken out of service in the 1920s. In 1935, it was stripped of its reusable materials, leaving behind its concrete hull. The Ballina Harbor Commissioners bought what was left of the Crate Boom in 1937 with plans to sink it at the mouth of the River Moy as a sand barrier. But it was damaged and started taking on water during the journey from England. The hull sat underwater for the next 40 years until 1974 when it was refloated and moved to its current location. There are numerous local legends surrounding the Crate Boom's origins. Some people claim that it was built as a decoy to trick German Air Force bomber pilots, while others say that it was used to train World War I naval cadets. Another story says that the ship was used for transporting ammunition between England and France. But these are just rumors that have never been confirmed. Nevertheless, the Crate Boom is an iconic fixture in the local landscape. Thanks for watching! Which one of these abandoned ships was the coolest to you? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already!